In this video, I'm going to show you multi-track drum recording and comping in Reaper. Now the purpose of this video is to show you how to record drums or any multiple source on multiple tracks and then comp them using the new feature added to Reaper 7 called lanes or track lanes. I've already set up some drum tracks and they're going to play along with some bass, guitars, and vocals. But I want to start off by grouping the drums so we can edit them together as a group. So we'll select all the drums, kick, snare, overheads, and rooms. I'll type Shift G, which opens up the group dialog, and I'll turn on the media edit or razor edit lead and follow. This way, when we're choosing lanes or comping the drums, all the tracks will be switched together. So I'll stay with the correct performance. And I'm also going to group the record buttons. So now, if we go to the drums and put them in record, all the drum tracks go into record together. And I've already set up the inputs where the mics are plugged into for the kick, the snare, the pair of overheads, and the room mics, which are both stereo. So let's record our first drum pass. So our drummer wants to record multiple passes so we can choose the best pieces later. Now if we record on top of this performance, by default, Reaper's going to create takes. But now in Reaper 7, we can create lanes instead. We can go up here to Options, New Recording that overlaps existing media items, and choose to add lanes instead of takes. So now if we record on top of this, it's going to create lanes for each pass of the drums. So let's record a second pass. And notice it created lanes. Lane one is the first pass, lane two is the second pass. Now let's record a third pass. Again, just record on top, and Reaper will automatically create a new lane. Now Reaper created a new lane, lane three. So you can hear it back. Let's take it out of record. Here's lane one. Here's lane two. And notice when we switch the lane, they all switch together because we grouped the tracks earlier. And here's lane three. Let's make the drum tracks a bit bigger so they're easier to see. And again, we can see lane one, lane two, and lane three. Now we'll create a comp lane we can comp into to choose the best parts of each pass. So we'll right click up here, we'll go to comping, and we could choose to comp into new empty lane, which creates this fourth lane 
we can comp into. Right now, we're not going to hear anything because we didn't choose any comp areas to comp from. We can put our cursor right here. Notice how the cursor changes, letting us know we're about to create a comp area. So we could draw a comp area. And now we chose lane one as our comp. We can click for lane two or lane three. Or we could use the T key to switch between our lanes. Lane one, lane two, or lane three. And notice how our lanes are switching together based on the group we created earlier. Now we could do this while viewing all these lanes like this, but because each lane is now so small, I'll prefer to do it while we view only one lane at a time. So we can right click up here, choose to show only one lane. Now we're just seeing the comp lane. So we can hit the T key to choose lane one, two, or three as our comp. So let's comp this part. We'll go back to lane one and let's hear the intro fill. From each one of our lanes. I think I like the third one. So we'll put our cursor right here on bar four and right click it and split the comp area right here. So now we could choose a different comp area for this part. Here's lane one, here's lane three going into lane one. So we could hear it in context. Or lane two. Or lane three. But I think I like the first one as it features the hi hat. And we can double check our crossfades, readjust them right here. So we're choosing lane one for this section. In this section, I want to switch to the ride, which was played on lane two. But I want to switch a bit earlier, so go to bar seven and right click, split the comp area. Let's move it so it switches on this fill, and let's hear the different lanes. I think I like this one. Again, we'll double check our crossfade. Let's stay with the ride symbol over here. And right at bar 11, let's split it again. Let's hear the different passes. Again, we could hear them in context as we're hearing the keeper piece from before going into the new pass we're keeping. I think I like the first one. This one. But at bar 12, let's split it again. Let's try that third pass, which is the crash symbol and a halftime feel. Then for the fill at the end, we'll split it again right here. Let's try the first piece. Right. 
That's not going to work. The second one. And the third one. I think I like the second one. And again, we'll double check our punches, readjust them here and here and here. Make sure they're perfect, looks good. And we're done and we're happy with the part. We could turn off comping over here by double clicking or just right click over here and disable lanes and hide non playing lanes which just shows us this one lane where we can't comp anymore. If we hit the T key, doesn't switch our takes, but we can always go back and recomp. Just right click, enable lanes, double click this again, which turns back on comping, and hit the T key to try different options. Maybe change the fill, And we're happy with the new comp. Just right click, disable and hide non playing lanes. And we're back to just a normal track. But we're not comping accidentally by hitting the T key. But we could still readjust our crossfades right from here to make them perfect. And again, at any point we want to recomp, we always have those pieces. We could open it up to see all the lanes with the comp lane up here. We could choose different lanes or different pieces for each comp area. Switch it with the T key by double clicking to recomp. And we could try different options. And we're happy with it. Once again, disable the lanes and hide the non playing lanes. And we're back to not being able to comp. Hit the T key. It doesn't change our lanes or our passes. So let's hear it all back. So doing it this way, we were able to choose the best pieces of every performance, putting it all together, crossfading it so the transitions sound perfect, grouping the tracks so we could edit them all together, and wind up with a final multi-track drum performance. So that's pretty much it. That's multi-track drum recording and comping in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.